Hi, my name is Charles Kaplan. I'm a professor at the State University of New York at Old Westbury. And this video is the first of about a dozen I'll be making on hypothesis testing. Now, this, uh, thus far, you've learned how to calculate the mean, which is a point estimate. You've learned how to calculate and measure the standard deviation, which is a measure of the variability of the data. You've learned how to create confidence intervals, which provide an interval rather than a point estimate of the mean. Now you're going to learn how to determine if the estimate of the mean is what we call statistically significant. That is, when we sample the data, could we obtain the measure of the mean by luck or chance, or is it indeed representative of the true population mean? There are some steps in hypothesis testing. I've listed them for you here. We want to list the important information, and that's things like the population mean, the standard, uh, the sample mean, the standard deviation, sample size, uh, and uh, the alpha, the level of significance at which we're working. We then want to draw a picture, something like you see here, and we want to identify the critical value and the means and that information. We then need to, in step three, determine the critical value. That's the cutoff point here for Z. We then, in step four, need to calculate the null and alternate hypotheses, H sub 0 and H sub 1. We need to then create a decision rule which tells us to reject the null under these certain conditions or do not reject the null. The sixth step is to calculate Z or T, the test statistic that tells us where the data lies, where, where the observation lies. Is it to the right of this critical value or to the left of this critical value? We want to form a, a conclusion based on that test statistic and then we need to write a report. In other words, we need to actually write down and say, hey, we want you to reject and this is the case and this is what you should expect. Okay, so let's get right to a problem. The claim by a weight loss company is that on average the client will lose 10 pounds over the first two weeks. 50 people who join the program are sampled. Their weight loss is 9 pounds with a standard deviation of 2.8 pounds. And the problem asks, can we conclude at the 5% level that a person joining the program will lose less than 10 pounds? And it also wants us to determine the p-value. So, okay, so let's begin. Let's begin by writing down the relevant information. So we know based on the question that mu, the population mean, is 10. We know that the sample mean is 9. We know that the sample size is 50. We know that the sample standard deviation is 2.8. And we know that we're working at the 5% level of significance. Uh, this alpha, the, five, the level of significance, is usually chosen by the mathematician, although on occasion the client will request that a certain level be used. We then want to draw the picture. So let's draw the normal curve. And we know that 10 is the uh, mean, the x mean, and we know that in the standard normal distribution, which has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, that this z value associated with 10 is 0. And now comes the hard part for most students, and that is, is this a one-tailed test, a two-tailed test, and if it's a one-tailed test, which tail are we working with? Well, let's go back to the question. The question is, can we conclude at the 5% level that a person joining the program will lose less than 10 pounds? Well, that's this side we're working with, and it's less than. Uh, so we have a one-tailed test, and we know that we have 0.05 in the tail. We don't know what this, Z, what this x value is associated with 0.05. But we are going to find now the critical value um, that's associated with it. And to do that, we're going to go into the book, to our Z table. And actually, before we do that, this area here, okay, we know that we have 0.5 to the right of the mean and 0.5 to the left of the mean. And the total area under the curve is 1.0. So we know that if this is 0.5 and we have 0.45 in the tail, we have 0.5 minus 0.05 equals 0.45. So this area oops, is 0.45.
and w therefore when we go into our book what you're seeing here is that and every z-table gives you a picture or usually presents a picture to you in this picture the areas that it's going to be giving us in the body of the text are associated with the central region here so we're going to we're going to look for 0.45 and 0.45 is right in here between 1.64 and 1.65 we go down our z column to 1.6 and if we go over to 0.04, we see it's 0.4495, and 1.65 is 0.4505. So 0.45 is right in the middle between these two. And so that's going to be associated with a Z value of 1.645, right, uh, one, right, 1 right in the middle between 1.64 and 1.65. And we're just going to stick a little negative sign on there, negative 1.645. I'm putting this down here because our, I've got our Z values down here. I don't know what the X value is associated with this, and it's not real important that we find it, uh, although we can, and maybe I'll do that, but depending on time. Um, okay. Uh, so now we know that this is 1.645. We can set up our... Uh, alternate in our null hypotheses H0 and H1 our alternate H sub 1 is the uh, hypothesis I work with first and the question asks can we conclude that the 5% level that a person joining the program will lose less than 10 pounds okay well that's the question that the alternate is going to ask so mu is less than 10 and then the null hypothesis H sub 0 that's easy now mu is greater than or equal to 10 we just reverse what we have in the alternate and stick a an equal sign in there so now we've done that we need to set up our uh, decision rule and our decision rule well when are we going to reject the null we're going to reject the null if z, oh, I'm running out of ink in this marker. We're going to reject the null if z, the test statistic that we calculate, falls to the left of negative 1.645. So let's do that now. Uh, the decision rule is to reject h naught if z is less than negative. 1.645 okay this is an H I kinda drew it badly but oh well now we need to calculate our test statistic and that's our Z statistic and that's uh, X bar minus mu over Sigma over the square root of N so we have X bar which is 9 minus 10 over the standard deviation 2.8 divided by the square root of n so it's divided by the square root of 50 I'm not going to take the time and go through the arithmetic here we just assume that you can handle a problem like that and this works out to be approximately negative 2.53 so that's our z value and 2.5 negative 2.53 is clearly way to the left of negative 1.645 it falls square into this tail so our decision rule is to reject the null if z is less than negative 1.645 well z sure is less than negative 1.645 so we're going to reject the null so our conclusion is let's go down here our conclusion is we reject h naught and conclude the mean weight loss is less than 10 pounds after all that's what we've got in the null in the alternate here okay and we're rejecting the null we're rejecting the null that the mean weight loss is greater than or equal to 10 so that's hypothesis testing uh, we can calculate the p-value. The p-value will just be the area associated with 
negative 2.53 and if we go into our textbook once more we see that negative 2.53 that is a 0.4943 and that's this central area here so what we're going to do is we're going to take um, 0.5 minus 0.4943 and that's equal to uh, 0 0.0057 and that's our p-value. That's all there is to calculating p. It's a simple little process. Personally, I prefer to do it the way we did it, uh, but there's nothing wrong with doing it with the, with the p-value. The p-value indicates the likelihood that we're going to get a value of 9 or less uh, in the tail. Okay. So that's the first example of hypothesis testing. Again, my name is Charles Kaplan. If you liked the video and found it helpful, I'd appreciate it if you leave some nice favorable comments. In the meantime, I wish you all good health, good happiness, long lives, and a lot of luck. Bye-bye.